Happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. Even in solution. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todabert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. In front of us we have the Eaton Grundig G5, yeah. AM FM stereo shortwave with single sideband portable radio. Say that ten times fast. <laughs> uh, here's the box that came in. I got this off eBay for 40 bucks. Uh, yeah, I was, thought it was a pretty good deal. I've been looking for one of these radios. Didn't know much about them. Just liked the looks of it and heard good things about it. So I'm like, yeah, I'll grab one of these things. Gotta be cool. So here's the box that came in. G5. Picture of the radio. Got little profile pics all over it here. Let's go to the back side of the box. Got some bullet points. The big ones that stand out here are full shortwave coverage, single sideband, yeah. 700 presets, awesome. So this radio reminds me of the satellite a little bit. Satellite has a few extra features though. Um, this radio here has still has ability to charge the internal batteries, which is really nice, and station name input. Very cool. So there's the box. Go ahead and set that aside. And in the box, I got the manual and AC adapter. So I'll show you the AC adapter first. It's uh, labeled Grundig here. Date code of June of 07. Gives you an idea of the rating for the radio. Pretty simple. Feels like a linear style, kind of heavy. Okay, next we got the operation manual. And it's pretty clear and concise. Uh, if you buy one of these radios, um, it'll have everything you need to know about getting started with this radio. Especially if you're new to shortwave and this is one of your first radios, you're going to like it. It's really easy, uh, clear and concise. And they have a really good uh, shortwave uh, primer. So let's tell you about that. So right in here, you can kind of see it starting. Introduction to shortwave. They got this really cool uh, write up about it, so you can you know when to listen to it, what you're going to hear. Uh, so it's pretty pretty handy. They got the charts you can look for certain stations in. Um, they have let's see, but there you go. The amateur radio band. You have aeronautical band. Uh, you got the maritime. So pretty neat. And then I don't know if they give anything else in here. They give some troubleshooting servicing. And I think that is about it. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Pretty cool. Got the book with it. It actually is a book. <laughs> like I say, it's multilingual, so all these other pages are all these different languages. So, all right, so decide. Let's get to the radio. Here it is. Sweet. Now, it looks nothing like the box, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> Let's go over dimensions first, though. Uh, six and three quarter inches across, four inches high, and a depth of one and one eighth of an inch. So it's not too thick. I actually like this form factor. It's really handy. Um, walking around with it today, outside, I was doing really well with it. So I've been using this radio a lot. I've had this radio for probably about four months. Um, I just finally got around to reviewing it because of its current state of affairs, and we'll talk about that. So let's do size comparison first. Uh, we have CC Pocket next to it to give you an idea for size. We have a deck of cards. I always like bringing out Iron Man there to give you an idea how big that radio is. And then my recently reviewed Radio Shack DX375 to give you an idea of size comparison and where the future has gone. <laughs> Hopefully where it's going too. So, all right, let's go ahead and bring this over here. Okay, so if you haven't seen my uh, Eaton satellite uh, radio review, I'll put a link up here and that'll uh, it's pretty much the same radio, just updated uh, with different screen and a few extra buttons and a few extra bands. But uh, yeah, this this radio is pretty comparable as far as some of the memory handling and everything. So if you need a little primer, you can watch that too. Um, but let's talk about this radio. Before we go over features, this radio, uh, as most people know, the Grundig G5 series, G3, G6, um, they're great radios and uh, they served a good purpose for a while, but they had this rubberized coating. And let me show you. you kind of see on this one side here, uh, this coating uh, is very difficult to remove. And it, this, when I got this radio, it was a complete mess. Um, and it took a lot of effort to try to clean it up. It was so bad, in fact, that it, these holes in the speaker grill were actually blocked. So you couldn't, the speaker was actually muffled <laughs> because the, the rubber coating had devolved to a petroleum sticky state. So it was a sticky radio and it was bad news. So now it's a little bit more usable, but it's not quite how it was original. As you can see, it's missing the LCD faceplate face there, and I'll explain why. So to clean that rubber coating, I took the radio apart 
and I got this front plate off, took the speaker off because it has retention screws and it's glued in, but I was able to pry it loose. And I got this face plate off and these keys come off separately, which was nice. And I was trying everything on this. I was trying Gugon, degreasers, anything you can imagine I was trying to use and it just wasn't working. And then somebody had mentioned isopropyl alcohol and I did that as last resort because I was getting fed up and it worked. The uh, 91%, it just bubbled it away, which was the most amazing thing. Um, it actually didn't take the letters off, which was I was really happy with. But it left a really um, stained area. You can see kind of it's stained um, in certain areas. And it was difficult to shine it up. So what I do is get some car wax. And it was all over this, and I had to try to shine up that plastic to get it kind of semi-gloss or glossy. So if you ever get one of these radios and it's a sticky mess, um, I'm feeling your pain because if you find something, let me know what works good for you. But take your time, um, clean it. It just, it's not fun. Another second thing is the LCD protector, pop that off and you can always glue it or stick it back on. I left mine on thinking it was the same type of plastic. It was no big deal. And if you mix isopropyl alcohol and warm water to that uh, LCD cover there, it burns. It actually melted. It does a chemical reaction and it melted the plastic and it ruined the LCD cover. So just letting you know, <laughs> I learned my chemistry. <laughs> Some plastics don't mix with alcohol and warm water. So there you go. That didn't. The black was okay, but that did not <laughs> survive. So now my radio looks a little, I don't know, used, more used <laughs> and abused, but it still works and I still use this a lot. So yeah, love it. Um, so let's talk about features. Since we have this radio out here, I'm just kind of lower this down a little bit more. All right. Okay, so left-hand side, we got a wrist strap. Yeah, there's wrist straps. I do like them, especially a bigger radio. I like to do that, I'm walking around with it. It's handy. Um, here we got on the side, antenna jack for external antennas. Mine's broken. I don't know what's wrong with it. When I hook up an antenna in there, be it stereo plugged or mono plugged, it does not improve reception at all. It actually goes dead, unfortunately. Um, so there's something wrong with that jack. Here we have a local DX switch. There you are. Here we have a headphone jack, which works really well for FM stereo and uh, AM listening and shortwave listening. I'm very happy with this. No low-level hiss, which is great. So if you're a headphone listener, this is a good radio for that. You'll love it. Here's your DC input to charge the batteries and to operate the radio. Okay. In front of the radio, we have AM, FM stereo, shortwave dual conversion, single sideband, 700 memories. See, I thought that was a pretty good deal, 40 bucks for this thing. I just didn't think it was going to be a sticky mess when I opened up the box. I almost returned it, but I was like, nah, I could take that sticky. It won't be a big deal. Yeah. Prove me wrong. <laughs> the speaker is a uh, two and a half inch variety and it sounds very good, which you'll get to hear. Grundig G5. Uh, here we got the power button, sleep function. We have a lock button. We have the LCD screen, as you notice, it has a 24 hour clock, which you can change different city uh, time zones, which is really cool. Here we have a battery level indicator, signal strength indicator, shows one through nine. Uh, it says weekday, third day of the week. Um, this also functions as what station you're on and if the presets are filled. And here we have a reset button to reset the radio. Here we have seven function keys, again, all similar to the satellite. Um, they may have somewhat different functions, but a lot of them are the same. The first four keys here, when the power is off, actuates your alarms. So you can turn on and off four different alarms, which is pretty cool. Um, you have a 9K, 10, uh, 9 to 10K uh, stepping for the AM band. You have a charge mode on uh, F7 there, so you can charge the battery, set the time for how much it's going to charge. And when you do that, uh, this radio says um, up to 39 hours, so you figure out the time frame by what capacity batteries you have. So I have 2400 uh, N-Loop Pros in here, so you would set it for 24 hours. It takes a slow charge, which is good. I don't mind that. And then F6, oh yeah, F6, I know, what that's, that's the scan button. What that means is when you're scanning or browsing for stations, there's a browse mode, which I like to use all the time, uh, which we'll use tonight. Um, it, you can have it stop on the station when it finds a station, or you can have it stop for five seconds, then go to the next station, or you can have it set for auto-tuning storage. Um, auto-tuning storage is kind of a pain. I don't like using it. Um, you can read the book on it if you want to know about it. I, we're not going to use it, or I'm not even going to showcase it. So it's not a feature I find very useful for this radio. I like manually storing my presets. It works out the best that way. Okay, so we got more buttons here. Uh, we have, starting over here, we have the store button, which is actually your memory. So when you find a station, you hit store. The weird thing is you have to hold it down and hit the spot where you want to put it in memory and then let go. Here we have the erase. Works the same way. We have check, which is cool when the radio is playing or when it's off. Hit the check button. Tells you uh, what uh, spot you're on. You can actually uh, 
like you can hit oh, when the radio's on you can hit page or up and down it actually go through the different um uh, frequencies there and tell you what frequency it is okay here we go so here from holding it down it's gonna tell me what is on those pages it won't change it just it's a check button which is really handy if you want to know because this thing has a lot of memories i like this button a lot here we have a time zone button you can change the time zone okay it's pretty basic uh here we have a numeric keypad for direct entry uh fm band select am band select shortwave select and entering in shortwave frequencies and am frequencies uh, over here we have up and down volume control single sideband mode we have a, a stereo mono switch mode when you're in fm here we have the edit key, which is uh, lets you add the uh, text that you saw to Toddbert. When I hit check there, see it well not Toddbert, it's Todd. Um, you're able to get do four letters. The um, satellite, uh, the new Eaton satellite has eight letters, which is nice. Um, you can put the you can put a little text for your page of memories, which is nice with that key. And of course, this actuates the light when you press it. Um, we have the page time feature, which is uh, you can set the time when the power is off, and you can also uh, select frequency or memory mode when the radio is on. Here we have up and down tuning buttons. There's just a lot to this radio. <laughs> Hope you're still with me. Up and down tuning, uh, seek, forward, seek, back, and auto tuning storage if you have that set up. Uh, on the right-hand side of the radio, uh, we have uh, the tuning knob. This is micro step tuned. So when you are using this, you use these keys most of the time with this radio. And then when you need to fine tune, you use this one here. So it does your fine tuning. This is your coarse tuning. Uh, we have a uh, shortwave narrow wide filter and then a news music uh, mode on the FM. Here we have the BFO knob, uh, which of course, you know, is upper and lower there. We have a line out jack, which is line level out for recording. Top of the radio, we have an antenna that extends out to 36 inches, which is fantastic and rotates three center, 360 degrees. You can kind of see the old rubber coating. There's still, still a lot of the coating I don't have off on this radio. I'm not even going to bother with it. Just gonna leave it as it is. Okay, this you gotta kind of bend this in and bring it over. Okay, so the back of the radio, you can see somebody else had tried to remove the stuff on the back. Is how I received it. All this writing is worn off. You can kind of see the frequency there. I'll kind of angle it so you can see. Um, there you are. And then, as you saw underneath there, it has. Uh, actually, I don't think I showed you. It has the meter bands. You can access meter bands when the radio is on with those function keys. When you're in frequency mode. When your memory mode, of course, those are memory keys. And then when the power's off, there's the four alarms, 9K, 10, 910K switch, scan setting I told you about in the charge feature. Behind here is four AA batteries. And uh, it says do not attempt to charge non-rechargeable batteries. Okay. So there is no switch for that. You just have to remember not to. <laughs> so, okay. Well, let's go ahead and turn on do an audio test with Radio Tadabur. Let's turn the power on. Now the neat thing is you can go to your memory mode. And you can just browse different stations. The cool thing about memory mode is you can have AM, shortwave, all mixed in on the same page. I have, I happen to have FM and AM mixed. So we're going to go to Rio Tadabert, do a little audio, and uh, see how it sounds. Stereo.
gives you an idea for the audio test. Let's talk about FM reception. Usually I do that first, but I got ahead of myself. So FM reception, um, FM sensitivity was very good. I found 75 plus stations, which was amazing. Uh, the FM selectivity was just good though, um, just above average uh, for normal analog radio. Unfortunately, uh, not as good as I would like. Um, a lot of the stronger stations and moderately strong, strong stations were bleeding over to the weaker uh, stations and I couldn't hear some of the weaker stations that exist. Uh, probably because of the type of radio it is. Uh, comparing it to a DSP radio, the DSP radio definitely blows it away, but uh, it's a selectivity issue. Um, had a lot of, you know, it was tough to get those faint stations to come in, but I was able to hear them at least. Uh, still better than the average analog uh, radio. I take this over an analog radio as far as FM reception any day. The stereo it actually comes in really nice on most of the stations. I like that. So let's go ahead and take an extended antenna up here. We'll do some shortwave listening so we can find anything on shortwave. And go from there. Now I do have my new station on FM, so we'll go over there. Let's see, Todd, we got uh what do we got up here? Let's see it turn this up. The CBS board and CEO Les Moonves have reportedly failed to reach a deal on his exit package, under whose contract Moonves is due as much as $180 million. The CBS board proposed a $100 million. I feel like you would be pastorally served by restating your marriage vows in the presence of a priest, precisely because you'd like to publicly articulate your more deeply... Yeah, so it works really good in the FM. And of course, when you tune... Here's your slow tuning. You can see how it tunes on the FM there. So if you're one of those people who want to tune a station in, it's just in the middle somewhere or just at the edge. You're able to do that with this. Just got to go really slow to try to fine tune it. This one kind of jumps a little bit here. There you go. You see how that works in the FM. So actually it's not really jumping. It's just going by different increments. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go to the shortwave. Uh, so shortwave bands here. Now you can automatically, if you're in frequency mode, this takes you to different meter bands by pressing these buttons. Okay, you can get through those pretty fast, which is nice. Um, and you can keep hitting this button too. This does similar. Okay, and what I did is I actually set up some presets. Oops, go to memory mode and um, change the page. We're on shortwave one page, shortwave two. So for shortwave one and two, what I did is I have presets up here where I change it every 3,000 so I can get right on station. So we're going to start out down at the bottom of the band here. Let's just go 2,500. We'll scan up. We'll hear what we can hear tonight. Let's turn this up. I'm going to hook up my little wire. So we got uh, WWV on 2.5 megahertz. Sweet. Oops, I got my page mode, done it before. Go to frequency mode, and we can do the scan, which goes pretty quick. It's pretty sensitive. And we'll see if we can pick up any ham activity also. If we do, great. Um, and we'll search that, but this is really nice. And we'll watch nun after nun, priest after priest, preaching <laughs> Bandwidth. For your entire home. Removing 220 plus can never let up to get this uh, static out. Easy to install and maintain, and keeps fluoride and other dangerous toxins out of.
Okay. So I believe this is Mobile, Mobile Alabama, that weather station, W is it WLO? I caught this before, this is uh, upper sideband. Cool. I'd like to hear that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go through here. Let me take it to, um, go down a little bit since we missed a couple there. Stay in the broadcast band area. Discharging their arms to claim them. However, we returned quickly in the direction of the camp and met soldier who informed us that it was. And analysis. Beyond any. So I'm just using the whip and the uh, little wire, Texan 3L8, PL380 wire that I had in my south facing window. It's not going outside, it's just, you know, in the blinds. It's doing pretty good. You take from the people of God that that tip top shape, maybe you are. You're still even in that Lot going on there. It was the ultimate contest of mind, and each side okay, let's uh, uh look for some ham activity, the forty meter band here. Pretty nifty. Oh, 
Marca es un fotógrafo de guerra, pero sus imágenes no son de edificios bombardeados o cuerpos mutilados. Jacopo Lucci. Una sesión de fotos en las calles y llenas. Okay, wow. I could stay in there forever. <laughs> I had fun. It, this thing is great. And it's not even my outside wire, so I'm excited to do a nighttime band scan. We're going to do one. Uh, the separate video. You're going to love it. So let's go ahead and we'll go to AM band. Um, just show you. Whoops. AM band here. And uh, we'll just kind of direct enter some stations and we'll see how they sound like. And then we'll do final thoughts. Um, let's see if we can do any long distance here. It's uh, 10.52 as you can see on the clock. Put this antenna down and away. Okay, this thing was really good during the day on AM. Amazing. So we're going to go ahead and put Nashville in. And uh, see what that sounds like. So nice. That's uh, WSM, Nashville, Tennessee. 434 miles. Sounding beautiful. Um, we can just key it up here to 740. So as you heard, the music on 740 is CFZM, Toronto, Ontario. 460 miles. Right here is the 750. This is WSB Atlanta, Georgia, 630 miles. There's your filter, just same as a shortwave. Yeah, long term listener. They said it is. First time calling. So, yeah, like, what are you doing? WHAS, Louisville, Kentucky. Kiowa Denver, not really getting it. CJBC, Toronto, Ontario. WWL, New Orleans, Louisiana. 865 miles. So there's a lot. KDK Pittsburgh, 450 miles. WHO, this is Des Moines, Iowa, 280 miles. Let's go 1160. Or 1140. WRVA, Richmond, Virginia, 665 miles. Eleven eighty is Rochester, New York. Wham, WHAM, five hundred and forty five miles. And we'll just go to the Toronto station. Sixteen ten. Mighty KCJJ there, Iowa City. On sixteen thirty. Okay. Gives you an idea. We're going to do a formal band scam. We'll talk more about the presets and everything. Just a lot of fun. This radio is still a lot of fun for me, even though it's in its state it's in. Jeez. Uh, so, uh, do I recommend this radio as a buy? I don't know. You you have to really be ready to handle the sticky in this situation. I would suggest this radio because this G5 is really nice. Um, another feature is these do illuminate. Uh, these are backlit. It's just very hard to show because it's fairly dim. But when it's really dark, it really does show. Um, I guess I'll do it here. Let's see. The light button. Okay. Hope you guys can see that. They do light up. It's just very, very hard to see. So I turn this light off here. It's going to show up. Yeah, it's not going to show up on camera because that one light's really bright. The keys do light up, but they're very, very faint. Um, I can see them, but it's like more of like a really light glow. So go ahead and turn this back on here. Okay. Gives you an idea. So, yeah. 
Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the big thumbs up, big like button. Um, like I said, I can't really recommend this radio because of that stickiness situation. It's an awesome radio. If you get one, it's not so sticky. But just remember, it's going to turn into a mess. Be ready to deal with it. It's just, it's a really, it's a headache to try to clean. Um, so that's what that sits. Uh, two, if you love Grundig radios, I try to get these in. And probably this will be my last one with the sticky ones. I'm not going to get a G6. I'm not going to get a G3. I have a G3 in-house, but the buttons don't work right. There's something wrong with the membrane board. So I'm not going to review that one. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's an older radio and it has issues. But this one's still rocking. <laughs> still sounds good. I love it. Um, so yeah, definitely um, one of those things where, yeah, you know, to subscribe, hit the bell icon, get notified of future videos, um, and see you know if I do any more of these or not. I'm not sure. But I'm definitely do some band scans. This radio does do really well. I'm going to have fun scrolling through the shortwave and medium wave during the day and night. Um, three, comment below what you think about the G5 Grundig. This is the Eaton version. Um, again, if you guys were wondering, Eaton does come rubberized, coated, uh, just like the regular one did. So somebody had asked me that before. Um, four, join me after hours over on Patreon. A lot of fun activities for you guys. Uh, I got old time radio shows for you to listen to. I have a lot of extra uh, articles I put up there uh, for you guys. It's all public and free. There's uh, a lot of content that is also, uh, if you decide to help the channel out and donate a dollar, two dollars a month, uh, you get access to a lot of extra stuff. You'll love it. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you watching. Take care, and we'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.